Hello friends, welcome to my channel. This is Charan. This is React JS video tutorial series. Now in this video tutorial, I will explain how to populate data from ASP.NET Web API into a React JS Bootstrap drop-down list, and also how to get the selected item from the drop-down list Bootstrap drop-down list. And here we got the final output of our application, the React JS component which contains a bootstrap drop-down list. Let's open this one. So here, the items I have fetched from this web API, the country ID and country names. Here it's displaying the country names, India, US and Australia. If a user select China, see here, the China is selected. Japan, India. If you are a first time visitor to my channel, please subscribe to get the latest updates. Before continuing this video tutorial, I sincerely recommend please watch my previous ReactJS tutorials and ASP.NET Core Web API tutorials also. You can find those videos in my channel playlist. Now let's continue the today's tutorial. Notice in this browser contains a web API which contains some country names and country IDs. And this data I am binding from the my Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. And this is a country table which contains two columns, CID and CNAME. And here we got the output of that web API. Now my aim is I want to populate this web API into a React.js with a bootstrap drop-down list. So let's create, uh, I'm using Visual Studio Code to create a React.js application. Just for the time saving, I have already created one React.js application, which is this one, chk mul insert. Now the next step is, we require one new component, and that component I am adding in our project source folder. Let me expand this source folder, right click the mouse, new file, and the file name is bootstrap, and bootstrap drop down list web API. Let's add the web API.js file. And here we got our JavaScript file. Now in this JavaScript file, I'm creating a React.js component, which is a functional component. But before that, we need to import the React class from the React library. So let's do that from first. Import React from React library. After that, I'm defining function bootstrap my file name which is my component name web api in this function return this return contains the output which is the html elements div element the div element is a root element of our component inside this div element i'm adding one center tag center tag populate data from web api asp.net web api asp.net web api into react js bootstrap bootstrap drop down and let's put this size in degrees and h4 get the Selected item, the bootstrap drop down list item. After that, I am adding one horizontal line. Now, after the horizontal line, I am implementing the bootstrap. So, first in the terminal, let's add our application name, React.js application name to this path cd chk mul insert then we need to install the bootstrap components to our project so for that let's go to browser and search for bootstrap react.js and from the search results i'm selecting the first option here we got the react bootstrap the React Bootstrap 
is a free open source. We don't require any license to use these components. So after that, get started. Now let's copy this command. Copy that one. Switch over to our React.js application. And in the terminal, let's install the React Bootstrap. And here the bootstrap is installed successfully. Updated three packages. Now I can implement the bootstrap in this React.js component. Here I forgot to add export default my component name. Now switch over to the bootstrap website. Select the components. Here we got the different components. From these components, I'm selecting the drop downs. The drop downs, and, and there is a plenty of examples here. Uh, I am using the simple one. Let's take this one. Let's take this one. Copy this one. And switch over to our code. And paste here. Now let's save this file, save all, now here we need to import drop down button, import drop down, import drop down, drop down button from react bootstrap forward slash drop down button and also we require the drop down which is a sub element of this drop down button import drop down from react bootstrap forward slash drop down drop down d capital this is a d capital Now let's check the output, the bootstrap is working or not, save this file, save all. Now I again come to the terminal, uh, to run the React.js application there is a command called npm, that's a package manager, start, enter. Friends here, I forgot to uh, configure my drop down list, this, this component. Uh, here in the index.js file in the index.js file notice the render method contains my previous component name which I'm deleting right now and I'm adding my latest bootstrap DDL web API component after that we need to uh, import this component in the header section that's it now let's save this file save all now run the command again and we am start so now here we got the first output the drop down button from the bootstrap is working which displays right now the default uh, output of the drop down button from the bootstrap now we need to bind this web api into this drop down list so again switch over to the component first what i'm doing uh, here in the functional component let's declare a constant variables result and get data um, is equals to use state i'm using use state and notice here when I have used this use state, automatically it's added to our header import react use state in the import method. After that, I'm using use effect method, use effect method, I'm 
I'm using fetch method. The fetch method contains the first parameter is the input request info. The request info we are getting from this web API. So let's copy this web API and paste here between single quotes, comma, and I'm adding the method. Next one is a method, is a get method. Now let's add the headers. Headers content type content type application forward slash JSON. Now after that dot then method then let's add a variable response will get data this data is a response here we require an array now let's bind the data here in this drop down list uh, what i'm doing here A result I'm adding here result dot map method so here items items is a variable a return return in this return I'm adding this drop down item items dot I'm adding the column name C name the country names I want to display C name and instead of href I'm adding instead of that I'm adding event key event key the property the event is items dot C name That's it. Now let's save this file. Save all. Now let's check the output. We have binded the web API in this drop down button or not. You can switch over to the browser. I'm reloading the browser. Now let's check. Notice first, let's delete this one, which we don't require. Now again save this file, save all. Now I'm reloading the browser. Notice again I'm opening the drop down button and notice the country names are not binded into this drop down list. Because the reason we need to configure the uh, enable calls in our ASP.NET Web API application. Let's do that one. This is my ASP.NET Web API. Let's stop debugging. Go to Solution Explorer. Right click the mouse. Manage the packages. From the browser, search for cores. And from the search results, let's select the ASP.NET, Microsoft ASP.NET Web API course. The version is 5.2.7. Click install. And to gather this dependency information will take time so please be patient and also one more thing if you don't know how to create a web api in asp.net i have created plenty of options from the beginners to the advanced level please check my playlist you can find those video tutorials click ok accept the license And here the Microsoft ASP.NET Web API course is installed successfully. See the icon here? Uh, let's close this Nugget package window. 
Now the next step, open Solution Explorer. In our project, there is app underscore start folder contains a web API config.cs file. Open that one. Here we need to configure config config dot enable cost. Now we need to add the enable cost in our controller. Our controller name is join controller. About the HTTP action result enable cost. Let's put this in a method. Uh, we require to add the namespace using using also namespace this one using system web API HTTP cost. Now which contains three methods. One is the first one is the origins all our strings so use the double quotes origins second one is the headers again asterisk and the methods that's it now build this application build succeeded let's run this api again forward slash api join enter and here we got our api now let's again open my react.js application npm start oops here we got and some error result of map is not a function result dot map this one put in the parenthesis items let's save all again now reload the browser so again we got the result that map is not the function let's check here the web api here we forgot the json type then response response dot json method sorry for that let's say all i hope this time it works perfectly see here we got the drop down button and here we got the uh, items are added successfully from this web api into this bootstrap drop down now my next condition is when a user selects notice here whatever the country name i'm selecting it's not displaying here so let's achieve that one first declare a constant variable let's define uh, one more constant variables uh, again the output output uh, set data set data is equals to use state use state now after that i'm adding one more constant variable uh, for the uh, drop down list event handle the selected value i want to display on the browser ddl handle is equals to set data this value here set data that's it now we require to handle ddl handle here on select event on select is equals to my event and handle event and here the title the title here first I'm adding plus plus
here I'm adding this output. In the final step, let's add h1, the value output I want to display. Save all, that's it. It's a very simple line code. Uh, let's check the final output. Let's check the final output of our application, the ReactJS component application. The data we have binded from this web API into this bootstrap drop down list. And if we use a select, see here New Zealand, USA. If you want to change the color, blue color, which is a default one. So for that, uh, in the drop down button, there is a property called variant, variant is equals to, I am adding dark, which displays the black color. Save all. Let's fill up the browser again. And here we got the final output of our application, the ReactJS component, which contains a bootstrap drop down list. Let's open this one. See here, the items I have fetched from this web API, the country ID and country names. Here it's displaying the country names, India, US and Australia. If I use a select China, see here, the China is selected. Japan, India. That's it. In this video tutorial, I have explained how to populate data from ASP.NET Web API into a ReactJS Bootstrap drop-down list. After that, how to get the selected item from the React Bootstrap drop-down list. Thanks for watching and please subscribe my channel.